the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And peace be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today, we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery. That is to say, his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered into his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city of our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. And so let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing, that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethpage, to the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find an ass tied and a colt with her, Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord has need of them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on an ass, and on a colt, the foal of an ass. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the ass and the colt and put their garments on them, and he sat thereon. Most of the crowd spread their garments on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went before him and that followed him shouted, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he entered Jerusalem, all the city was stirred, saying, Who is this? And the crowd said, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, like the crowds who acclaim Jesus in Jerusalem, let us go forth in peace. Hosanna to the Son of David, Hosanna to the Son of David. Hosanna to the Son of David, Hosanna to the Son of David, the King of Israel, Hosanna in the Hosanna in the highest. 
and let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Saviour to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit to share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord has given me a disciple's tongue so that I may know how to reply to the wearied. He provides me with speech. Each morning he wakes me to hear, to listen like a disciple. The Lord has opened my ear. For my part, I made no resistance. Neither did I turn away. I offered my back to those who struck me my cheeks to those who tore at my beard. I did not cover my face against insult and spittle. The Lord comes to my help, so that I am untouched by the insults. So too I set my face like flint. I know I shall not be shamed. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. His state was divine, yet Christ Jesus did not cling to his equality with God, but emptied himself to assume the condition of a slave, and became as men are. And being as all men are, he was humbler yet, even to accepting death, death on a cross. But God raised him high and gave him the name which is above all other names, so that all beings in the heavens, on earth and in the underworld, should bend the knee at the name of Jesus, and that every tongue should acclaim Jesus Christ as Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Glory and praise, oh glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ became obedient for us even to death, dying on the cross. Therefore God raised him on high and gave him a name above all other names. Glory and praise, oh glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Jesus was brought before Pontius Pilate, the governor, and the governor put to him this question. Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, It is you who say it. But when he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he refused to answer at all. Pilate then said to him, Do you not hear how many charges they have brought against you? But to the governor's complete amazement, he offered no reply to any of the charges. At festival time, it was the governor's practice to release a prisoner for the people, anyone they chose. Now there was at that time a notorious prisoner whose name was Barabbas. So when the crowd gathered, Pilate said to them, Which do you want me to release for you, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called Christ? For Pilate knew it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. Now, as he was seated in the chair of judgment, his wife sent him a message. Have nothing to do with that man. I have been upset all day by a dream I had about him. The chief priests and elders, however, had persuaded the crowd to demand the release of Barabbas and the execution of Jesus. So when the governor spoke and asked them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? They said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, But in that case, what am I to do with Jesus, who is called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. And Pilate asked, Why? What harm has he done? But they shouted all the louder, Let him be crucified. Then Pilate saw that he was making no impression, that in fact a riot was imminent. So he took some water, washed his hands in front of the crowd, and said, I am innocent of this man's blood. It is your concern. And the people, to a man, shouted back, His blood be on us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas for them. He ordered Jesus to be first scourged and then handed over to be crucified. The governor's soldiers took Jesus with them into the praetorium and collected the whole cohort around him. Then they stripped him and made him wear a scarlet cloak. And having twisted some thorns into a crown, they put this on his head and placed a reed in his right hand. To make fun of him, they knelt to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head with it. And when they had finished making fun of him, they took off the cloak and dressed him in his own clothes and led him away to crucify him. On their way out, they came across a man from Cyrene, Simon by name, and enlisted him to carry his cross. When they had reached a place called Golgotha, that is, the place of the skull, they gave him wine to drink mixed with gall. 
which he tasted but refused to drink. When they had finished crucifying him, they shared out his clothing by casting lots and then sat down and stayed there, keeping guard over him. Above his head was placed the charge against him. It read, this is Jesus, the King of the Jews. At the same time, two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. The passers-by jeered at him. They shook their heads and said, So you would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days? Then save yourself. If you are God's son, come down from the cross. The chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him in the same way, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now and we will believe in him. He put his trust in God. Now let God rescue him if he wants him. For he did say, I am the son of God. Even the robbers who were crucified with him taunted him in the same way. From the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabatani. That is, my God, my God, why have you deserted me? When some of those who stood there heard this, they said, The man is calling on Elijah. And one of them quickly ran to get a sponge, which he dipped in vinegar and, putting on a reed, gave it to him to drink. The rest of them said, Wait, see if Elijah will come to save him. But Jesus, again crying out in a loud voice, yielded up his spirit. At that, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, the rocks were split, the tombs opened and the bodies of many holy men rose from the dead. And these, after his resurrection, came out of their tombs, entered the holy city and appeared to a number of people. Meanwhile, the centurion, together with the others guarding Jesus, had seen the earthquake and all that was taking place. And they were terrified and said, In truth, this was a son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. One of the most difficult things for the early Christians to deal with was the whole idea of crucifixion. Paul named it clearly in his first letter to the Corinthians. The crucifixion was, for the Jews, a stumbling block. For the Greeks, foolishness. For those in the Greco-Roman world, crucifixion was an obvious sign that the one killed in such a way was a criminal. And in particular, a threat to public order. For the Jews, it was even worse. To be killed in such a way was a sign of God's curse. In Deuteronomy, in chapter 21, the words are clear that anyone put to death by hanging on a tree is cursed by God. The difficulty that the early church had with crucifixion can be seen, or as the case may not be seen, in the early iconography, the art of the church. The symbols of the church were like things like the fish or the Cairo, that sign with the X on top of the P. The first recorded depiction of the crucifixion was not until about the fifth century, when a crucifixion image was carved on the doors of the church of San Clemente in Rome. 
Throughout the Gospels of Lent, we have witnessed Jesus being shown to replace or reinterpret the old ways of seeing and understanding how God sees the world, and in particular, how God sees humanity. The law and the prophets are subordinate to Jesus. The promise of God is not to be limited by adherence to a particular understanding of faith or by a person's moral circumstances. Disability and even death are not judgments and punishments, but rather they're opportunities for the glory of God to be revealed. In the Passion, we witness the law of Deuteronomy set aside. If one hanged on a tree is truly cursed of God, then how can he still be the Messiah? Either he is not the Messiah, or the curse does not stand. If that curse does not stand for Jesus, then neither can it stand for Judas who is under the same curse by his own hand. If this curse no longer stands, what then of all the other curses found in the books of the law? I wonder how many who are planning to eat a meal of prawns or shellfish on Friday see themselves cursed because it has been established in the book of Leviticus to be such the case. The curses of the scripture, when properly unpacked, are usually reflections of the times and the culture in which they came. Eating shellfish in the desert was not a wise move. You were more likely to get food poisoning and everyone knew in those days that being sick was a punishment from God. While most of the curses of the scripture have been quietly dropped, there's still a few that the old favourites of the literalists and the bigots that are being shouted from pulpits and on street corners today. More often than not, as they did when they were first written, these curses reflect the minds, the fears, and misunderstandings of those who thunder them than they do the mind of the one whose response to the curse of Deuteronomy 21 was an empty tomb a few days later. The passion of Jesus abolishes the curses. At its most fundamental, it abolishes the false understanding that death itself is a curse or a punishment from God. Rather, the passion of Jesus is an invitation to a closer relationship with God, foreshadowed by the invitation to this meal that we celebrate today. The only curses left are those that we impose on ourselves and those that we impose upon others. So let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. 
he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Sisters and brothers, let us make our prayers before God, the Father of our Saviour. That through compassion and self-giving, the Holy Church will follow the suffering, death, and resurrection of Christ during Holy Week. In your mercy. Lord, hear our prayer that those who are unjustly condemned may live in the truth and trust in the hope that they are favored in the Lord's eyes. In your mercy. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christians may embrace the sacredness of Holy Week with a commitment to repent of their sins and strive for true holiness in Christ. In your mercy. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who deny Christ are live with spiritual distress may become faithful witnesses of Jesus' love for all humankind. In your mercy. Lord, hear our prayer. That those affected by disease may be strengthened by God's love and comfort. We especially remember communities affected by the spread of the coronavirus. In your mercy. Lord, hear our prayer. That those in the medical profession working in difficult and uncertain, uncertain circumstances will be granted courage and endurance. We pray especially for those assisting in the coronavirus outbreak. In your mercy. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick will be shown mercy and gratitude. In your mercy. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died will live forever with Christ Jesus. In your mercy. Lord, hear our prayer. And we bring before the Lord the prayers that lie within our hearts. God our Father, you gave us your Son as life for the world. Hear our prayers and help us unite ourselves with the passion of your Son and so rise to new life with you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In my crushing, in my pressing, you are making me one. In the soil I now surrender, you are breaking me ground. So I yield to you and to your careful. When I trust you, I don't need to understand So make me a vessel Make me an offering Make me whatever you want me to be I came here with nothing But all you have given me Jesus, bring new wine out of me. Jesus, bring new wine out of me. Cause where there is new wine, there is new power. There is new freedom. The kingdom is here. I lay down my own. Carry your new fire today. Yeah. 
So make me a vessel, make me an offering, make me whatever you want me to be. God, I came here with nothing, but all you have given me, Jesus, bring you wine out of me. Jesus, bring you Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that through, though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects, the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant. The order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. And to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. And at the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we have the courage to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let's greet each other with peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. I invite you to join me in now making a spiritual communion. let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.